Hey everybody, welcome to the Pixel List Podcast for May 12, 2013. I'm Andy Ryan. I live by one credo, live free or skate or die. Joining me as always is the man behind the Tiki Mask and TNC Surf Designs, Dave DeWert. Dave, what are you playing this week? Um, so the game that I've been playing has actually been, it's a lot of fun, it's a real simple game. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's really hard to pronounce the name. I think it's called Rim Capsule. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds right, it looks right. Um, it's a very minimalist, isometric uh, strategy game for your PS Vita. Hmm. Um, it's a PlayStation Mobile game, so mm -hmm. eventually it'll be able you'll be able to run it on all those Sony certified yeah. Android devices. And I believe it's also coming to the uh, iOS hmm. uh, in July ish. I think is what the guy, the developer's uh, website said. But it, I mean, like I said, it's a real simple strategy game where mm -hmm. you're in a little space station floating in space. And you have to defend it against invaders who come around on timed intervals because mm. the that's how it yeah. forces you to do stuff. Um, I, I mean, it's it's a neat little like six dollar PSN game. So um, how did you hear about it? I don't even remember. I th I think I saw just like a video of it in passing, and I'm like, oh, mm. that looks neat. That looks like that'll scratch a strategy itch on the go. Um, <laughs> since uh, since you can't get XCOM on the go yet, and you can't yeah. get whatever, so. It's, it's a neat little game, and for seven bucks, I've got my money's worth out of it. I think I've put like six or seven hours into it this week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and it's like all the, the little rooms are kind of randomly assigned Tetris pieces. Because mm -hmm. it's a, you know, every room is a set of squares, but, you know, mm -hmm. you get your little Z shape, your little S shape, or... L shape. L shape. The two L shapes, the right and the left, and mm -hmm. your square. It's just, it's a really neat little game, and it's not hard to figure out, but it's really hard to complete the missions it gives you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, as it's a wave-based thing, when the enemies come in, by wave, like, 24, 25, they're coming in faster than you can reassign all your minions. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just leave them in the defense stations, or mm -hmm. figure out a way to have so many, and so many defense stations around the center of your base, so that you can actually have guys doing stuff. It's, it's one of those things I, th I think we talk about a lot when it comes to games like that, mm -hmm. is... Uh, any game with strategy is uh, easy to learn, hard to master. Hard to master. It's, it's like a fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's even going back to like Magic: The Gathering. Mm -hmm. Easy to learn, hard to master. Like I think that's that is. We'll, we'll be talking about it later, but that's one of the things that I think drives you to enjoy a game yeah. in the long term. It does. It, and it, it keeps you coming back. Yeah, and, and and that's part of the thing. Like the longest game I've had has been like forty-five minutes. I'm just mm -hmm. sitting on my couch doing it while I was watching a movie or something. Doing it and doing it well. Uh, just doing all right, not super well. Um, I, got, I kept losing little dudes, um, but you know, it's a good. It's a, like a, it's a good lunch break, mm -hmm. or like if you commute on a bus or a train or something. It's a good like. Man, I wish work. I commuted on a bus or a train. I know. Well, we're not that big of a city. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but it, it, I it's, think there's a bus that goes by my house actually. Well, yeah, the, it, the metro goes all over the place. Well, yeah. And I'm, I live on the same street as I work on, just, you just for far of yeah, part of a part, that, of I can't a part walk. that you can't walk. So, um, um, but yeah, it's it's a neat little you know six seven dollar game on the PlayStation yeah. Mobile Store. And um, the PlayStation Mobile Store is full of those. Oh, yeah, it's also yeah. full of like weird like cell phone appy stuff. Well, and that's the thing with this. There's no button prompts. You you mm -hmm. don't use the buttons at all. It's all touch, touch screen. screen. I don't know if there's any rear touch to it. I, mm -hmm. I can't really imagine there would be unless you're just placing blocks and. I know I know a lot of the way, games that are on. PlayStation Mobile will have an option to enable the buttons, but most of them are disabled buttons. Yeah, yeah. So the the buttons, as far as I could tell, are disabled in this the game. The buttons but it and is, Yeah, but you don't need them because mm -hmm. it's tappy, very tappy, tappy, intuitive. Tappy, tappy. The way you assign your 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 little minion guys is you just you take them from one thing and you swipe them over to the next. Mm -hmm. You drag down the um, the different rooms that you have to have for like your garden, your reactor, your kitchen. Mm -hmm. You just drag them down, and then the the blocks will change colors and be in the Tetris shape. That's Next up in the queue. Interesting. It's a very neat little game. I'll show it to you on lunch. Um, cool. Uh, but yeah, for for six or seven bucks, it's not bad. And yeah. if you don't have a Vita, again, you can get it on the Android and iOS devices mm -hmm. in a few months. That's one of the things that like we always talk about is the value for your dollar. Yeah, for six bucks, it's and, a pretty good game. And when game. you get to that sub ten dollar market, it's really hard to talk yourself out of getting a game. Yeah, I mean, I unless, that's kind of why I ended, I've ended up with so like. So many like old Nintendo games because they're all like oh nine ninety nine like pff, I can't okay. argue with that yeah. I will probably enjoy for that for ten for bucks I'll, I'll enjoy it for ten bucks worth of money yeah I mean it's still like even if you enjoy it for three hours it's more cost effective than going to a movie mm. so unless that movie's Iron Man three which you should probably see at least four times I've seen Just it twice already and I've seen it twice already and uh, the three D didn't do anything for me yeah the second time I saw it, I saw it in two D and uh, the only time I missed the three D was the 
the only time I really missed the 3D was that uh, skydiving sequence. Yeah. Because the 3D was, was awesome in that. That was pretty good, but I mean, like, the rest of it. Yeah. And it might have been just because the, the movie theater was a small theater, and they just got a digital projector. What, are you going to get out your Iron Man 3 3D glasses? My, my specials. Your special edition Iron Man 3 3D glasses. Because he's a big nerd, folks. If you didn't know it already, you should just wear those the rest of the time. I can't. Like, this is really right now giving me a headache. Well, then take them off. <laughs> So uh, that's amazing because I, w I wouldn't have thought that that would happen that quickly. But like you my eye, for 10 I, seconds. my eyes are immediately trying to like focus on stuff that mm -hmm. you can't focus on with the other eye. But these are really cool. They are they really. Gave, they gave us a choice of a couple different ones. Uh, when I went to see Avengers, they also gave us a choice of a couple different ones. Avengers, I picked up the Incredible Hulk, and this time I was like, no, I want the I want the red, the, and the, gold, red and the gold, red and the gold Iron Man ones. Anyway, so yeah, there's our plug for Iron Man three. Go watch that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm a so, huge Marvel fanboy. So if you're looking for like fair and balanced reporting uh, between Marvel and DC, like, this is not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So yeah, that that's my game of the week is is Rim Capsule. Find it on the PSN uh, in the mobile section on the Vita store. Yes, uh, I've been playing. Well, it just came in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, it was once again. We'll talk about that really good deal. Uh, it was a ten dollar game on Amazon. I think it's still at ten dollars on Amazon. Uh, Child of Eden for the PlayStation Move. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember Which that. is the spiritual successor Such to Rez, Rez. Yeah, okay. wh which I loved. Okay. Um, and it's amazing, and it's exactly what you think. Like, saying that is the spiritual sequel to Rez totally makes sense because it plays the exact same it's, way as Rez does. It's like Demon Souls and Dark Souls. They're basically the same game. They just had to rechange, they had to change the IP up. Yep. Uh, and it's, it's Q Entertainment, okay. who also does Luminous and obviously did Rez. Yeah. Uh, and so the music is really good. The visuals are really awesome. It's one of those games where you just kind of like tune out and you're just kind of watching it. You play the game, but the, you, you don't feel like you're playing a yeah. game. You feel like you're, you're like, experiencing This is just really amazing. Cool. Um, the other cool thing is with the move controller, it, it pulses. Mm -hmm. It vibrates yeah. in time with the music, um, which is something I've heard that the Kinect game lacked, is that you, you kind of didn't have that feedback that you needed. Well, yeah, because... You there's don't a, hold anything on yeah. the Kinect version. There's a part, uh, one of the things in the game, you get bonuses by doing stuff mm -hmm. on the beat. Mm -hmm. And, if and you when have it's the buzz, constantly, you, buzz, 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 you, you get like, the beat mm, real quick. Mm, mm. And I actually noticed, uh, secondarily, uh, that I was tapping the controller mm -hmm. with the beat because my reticle would bounce. bounce. Um, so that was kind of... That was kind of a give and take. It made it hard mm -hmm. to like. It made once it hard I to focus on what you were doing, yeah. on what you're supposed to do, but at the once same I time, noticed I was doing it, I could kind of like stop doing it. But yeah, for a while there was like, why am I not hitting? Oh, I'm, I'm you're bouncing the thing, my wrist. and you're not supposed to do that. Um, but it's really cool, really, really great. The story of it is bonkers. Um, you are there. Uh, where you're in the far flung future, mm -hmm. and the last, the first person born in space is called Lumi. Um, okay. And since Lumi, Earth has been like destroyed, and most of the people are now born in space. Mm -hmm. So they've downloaded all of Earth, all of like, like okay. the Wikipedia of Earth. Um, Earthopedia. Yeah, all of like what it looked like, what the animals were like, all this stuff. Okay. And also downloaded Lumi into this, and they call it Eden. Okay. And this this faux Earth with Lumi in it is what Eden is, and it's kind of the internet for the super far flung future. Okay. Uh, and it is awesome. And the story is a virus attacks Lumi. You but you don't really know this. It's kind of like you see Lumi in her garden and she's an actual actress and everything. And then like dark like mud droplets start coming in and she gets all scared and it, it's done with like the bare minimum of text. And then once you see it coming together in the levels, it's even cooler. Okay. Because like the first time I saw Lumi in a level, I'm kind of buzzing through this level. And the first time I noticed her, there's a bunch of these like spinning polygon cubes Mm -hmm. And they all, when they spin, her image is, is made as they spin. Okay. So and it's actually like a picture of the actress that's made. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. It's wonderful how you did that. And then at the end of the level, you're, you're feeding the, defeating the boss. And as you knock parts of the boss away, which you have to do with a flick of your wrist, you yeah. kind of bat them back and forth, um, you see that Lumi is inside of it, like curled up in the fetal position, glowing and pulsing oh, okay. with the music. So you have to save her from the, the thing yeah. at the end of the level. That's and cool. And it's, 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 once again, like if you liked Rez and I really liked Rez... This is that game with a new mechanic. That's cool. And that new mechanic is the touch and um, the, the motion. Move, the mo motion. motion controller, yeah. Uh, it works like touch, though. Is yeah. you, you kind of swat. Um, okay. I never, I I never I felt like it was like I had to shake the thing to yeah. make it work. I felt like I was batting at stuff. That's cool. Um, 
and it was really good. And once again, for ten dollars, the minute it popped up in, uh, always look up for uh, Kotaku.com's deal uh, articles. They always mm -hmm. have wonderful or deals, deals or of the week or whatever. Money they, saver, I think is what they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And when it popped up in there, I was like, ten dollars sold. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bucks. call my wife. Like, <laughs> that's okay. She'll yeah. get over it. She was like, yeah, it's ten dollars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it's and the music is really good, and it it, it also works around this thing called Synthasia, uh, which the guy that came up with Rez and came up with Luminous and is Q Games and I E came up with Child mm -hmm. of Eden. Uh, he's been working on this. It's it's where the visuals and the audio and the sensation that you get while the gameplay is going on all mixes into one, and you're just in it. Yeah, yeah. it's like an a all-encompassing yeah. experience. And we talked about that with Dyad earlier mm -hmm. uh, last year. We've talked about it with Tetris. Is there's mm -hmm. a time when it clicks and you're just in it. And you're in it and you're going. And, and this game has that that the 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 time between hitting go and it clicking mm -hmm. is really short. Okay. Well, like it sucks you in. You're in. And it's super fun. So, so there's, it's not super mechanic heavy. It's yes. not something that you need to like sit there and, and ponder and yeah. pour over. You just figure it out fairly intuitively mm -hmm. after like ten minutes. And there's a there's a tutorial about how to use the lock on versus how to use the rapid fire okay. versus and how to use your bombs. Okay. And that's it. Now Go. is it is it one move controller? Or is it two move controllers? Or is it the move controller and the little directional pad thing? I only tried with one. Okay. But I could see how you could do two. Um, like, is it multiplayer at all, or is it single player only? I think it's multiplayer. So you and a buddy could sit there and swipe yeah. it. That's cool. Or like it would be cool because in in the the Connect version, one hand is the lock on, mm -hmm. and then one hand is the rapid fire. So you would use one to do the lock on, and the other one to just aim. I believe. Okay. You kind of lock on, and then you like flick your hand or something, okay. and it shoots them, um, and then use the other hand to do because there's two. There's the lock on is a blue laser, the rapid fire is a pink laser, okay. and you kind of have to bounce back and forth between the two of them. So, so having two enemies. move controllers would allow you to do that. Yeah, little and it would be easier. it would be cool because like the blue ball would be on one, the pink, pink, pink ball would be, be on the other. Yeah, that's cool. And the fact that they were both pulsing in time would be nice. Um, okay, I can see how that would be a really neat. Uh, yeah, it's really, really neat once experience. Again, ten dollars. So, so for ten bucks, you can't beat that. So uh, when we talk about value and we talk about the the amount of time you get out of a game, this is kind of an important season for that. Yeah, um, less so for people our age. But well, yeah, because we got work and all kinds of other we got stuff yops. going on. Yeah, many many yops. Them yops. But for you know <laughs> people who like kids who have high in high school who have jobs, but you or know, college kids or college Man, kids who have I a lot of them. I, I college college in video games in college during the summer. I would blow through so much. Oh yeah, well because that's when you, I would eat up my do? back catalog. Yeah, I'm I'm at home. I'm, and you got I'm gonna go going out on. later tonight, but. During the day, when you're sobering up from last night, you can yeah, sit and play or games. like waiting for your part-time job to start yeah, or your get over. five hours that yeah. you put in every two days. Man. Um, so anyway, so the summer is usually a, a pretty dry time for new games. Um, mm -hmm. So dry and itchy, and potentially stinky. Yeah, um, get the lotion. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so we we came we both came up with a couple of games that that, that yes. we would think that you would like to go through, and that I would definitely do if I had the time to do it. Um, so my first game is is. From last year. In fact, both my games are from la the last year. Yeah, we're also looking at value too. So yeah. these are the games that are going to be a little bit cheaper. So okay. easier. You're going to get a lot of bang for your buck, is what I'll say. Okay. Well, uh, so that might not be so true with my games then. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I took uh, Borderlands 2 as my first game. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, Borderlands 2 is not $60 it's anymore. It's not 60 bucks anymore, but you still have the DLC coming out, so you're going to spend a little bit of money on the DLC. Yeah. But, uh, you know, with. with with the original Borderlands and with Borderlands 2, the, the story was funny. Mm -hmm. It had the replayability because you had four characters grindy, to start grindy, with. Grindy, 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 and if you really grindy. wanted to grind, 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 whatever, um, you can always respec your character. Numbers. Yeah, numbers. And numbers, <laughs> numbers flying off of, of zombie midget dudes. But uh, you could definitely, this would work for Borderlands 1 as well. Yeah, for Borderlands 1 or Borderlands 2, since they're essentially the same game, just with new environments, new guns, new characters. Um, it, it, you know, you've got. New Game Plus, after you beat it the first time. You've God, got I love your, that New Game Plus. You've got four characters. You, you have randomly generated weapons. So no two weapons you're ever going to find are, are alike unless it's a specific drop-off of a boss, which I believe those exist. There are some guns that just exist in the game, and they have mostly stagnant stats, but there's a couple at the bottom that change. Mm -hmm. Like, adds fire damage instead of electrical damage, things like that. Um, but it is, it is one of those games that you will dump hours into. And then there's four-player co-op, so if you have... Three buddies who also are sitting at home, not doing jack. 
you could sit and you know take on the world with four buddies and and just tear it to shreds. Yeah. So a few years ago, Dave got Borderlands and wouldn't shut up about how awesome Borderlands was. So it was then pretty good. I bought Borderlands uh, at one of these pre-summer sales, mm -hmm. Memorial Day sale. I got it for twenty bucks. And it was a wonderful price to pay for that game. And I put it in, and I called Dave, and I was like, Dave, let's play, let's play Borderlands. Uh, I have a PC version. Screw you. <laughs> Sorry. I, so I actually, but I actually did end up. I ended up sinking a lot of time into Borderlands. It's, it's and a it's really, a really neat, good game. It's a really neat really game, like and it. the writing is really funny. Uh, the only shortfall I, that I could say about it is once you do the story once, mm -hmm. it is kind of. It's there. It, it's there, but the side missions are varied enough, and the, and the way that you play your characters is varied mm -hmm. enough. Um, that I, I think that will allow you to sink more than just the 25 hours it takes to burn through the story. Mm. Um, especially with New Game Plus and all the side missions. Mm -hmm. you, you have got at least a good 80 hours in that game if you play one character. Yes. Okay, so my first recommendation is uh, when I was in uh, middle school, high school, college, even now, uh, I always play an RPG during the summer. It's a good time to play an RPG. It is, because you have tons of time you to tons do of time. nothing. And you can figure out the systems and everything. So my original one, I was going to say, uh, was going to be White Knight Chronicles 2, which okay. actually comes with White Knight Chronicles 1, a better version of White Knight Chronicles 1 inside okay. of it. But we just recently found out that the servers are getting turned off for the oh. multiplayer. So if you want the multiplayer, sorry. Uh, they're still great games. Uh, the battle mechanic is still really fun. I really like it. Um, and the story is typical JRPG fashion. It's kind of a throwback. It's kind of silly. Um, but it's fun, and mm -hmm. it's good. And I really liked it. I liked the first uh, White Knight Chronicles. I bought it in that same sale I bought Borderlands yeah. in. Played it to death. Uh, picked up two when it came out. Haven't finished it. Yet. Yet. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're going to have some downtimes coming soon, right? Yes. So my other recommendation, since the servers are getting cut off for uh, White Knight Chronicles, you might not want to necessarily buy into that. Uh, is Nino Kuni because Nino Kuni is getting a price cut to forty dollars. Oh really? Yes. Is that is that effective on the store and in retail at the same time? I or? think it's only in retail at the moment. Okay. Because I think it's one of those things of like we've had this stock hanging around for a few months. And we so just need to get you know, rid of it. We're gonna bump it down twenty bucks. <laughs> okay. So if you can find Nino Kuni for forty dollars, it is a steal. It's a steal at sixty, but for forty, you're you're yeah. you're, you're highway robbing in the place. Well, I'm I'm still contemplating getting that game, but I will probably wait until after. The, the new systems launch, yeah. so that I could send, then move my PS3 in my office, and I don't have to take up the big TV. Uh, well, uh, so Nino Kuni has just a wealth of content. It's it's one of these level five RPGs that is just throwing stuff at you. It's really fun. It's really great. It is a wonderful Wednesday. iteration on what's in White Knight Chronicles because yeah. I feel like the level five kind of started with Dragon Quest mm -hmm. five, uh, Dragon Quest eight, like really getting down pat what they wanted to do, and then went up another step with Rogue Galaxy of, of that in an action RPG, which mm -hmm. is really good if you can find Rogue Galaxy for your PS2. I highly recommend you play it. It's one of my favorite games. And then they were kind of like, okay, well we what we do with Rogue Galaxy, we're going to do it again with White Knight Chronicles, White Knight Chronicles two, and then Nino Cooney. Nino Cooney is all of that wrapped up in all of these different systems and with some really nice Studio Ghibli anime oh, cutscenes and perfect and, and great. And, and the 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 way the characters flow in that game, like the way the, mm -hmm. the characters look, they're cell shaded, but they look like they're just hand drawn anime characters. Yep, the, the 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 you take a screenshot and it looks hand drawn. It looks like it could straight up be out of like Princess Mononoke yes. or something like that. Really great, things. really good. And once again, I highly recommend you pick it up. And it has so much content in it. So that's my RPG suggestion. Although, um, I'm kinda kinda, the next one's going to kind of be it too, but anyway. I think both our games, I think all of our games are going to be RPG-esque, because Borderlands is a first-person RPG. Well, yeah, because that's where you're going to get the, the wealth of content. Yeah, it's, it's the leveling hundred hours. characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, my second game is actually a science fiction strategy turn-based RPG, also the known XCOM? as XCOM. And yeah, you know. Yeah. I everyone knows he loves XCOM. Uh, everyone loves I know. Everyone knows it, I love Nino Cooney. You love yeah. XCOM, okay? But you know, the the thing with XCOM is I've put probably 25, 30 hours into it. I'm probably not even halfway through the story, mm. um, mostly because I keep just doing like the side missions to grind up my guys. That's the great thing about strategy RPGs is, is that there's yeah, you're like ah, I could go on the story or I yeah, could go or I could do here. all this um, just so you can like. You know, grind out money so that you can then you know launch satellites to cover different aspects or different sections of the world because then they they give you money mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And and you know when you lose a guy, it's like, well, damn, I just lost my best friend. No, damn you, Tito Fuente. I actually had a guy named that once, uh, but he had I don't remember what his his 
his uh, nickname was. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, and just playing that game and, and learning all the strengths and the weaknesses of mm -hmm. the different classes and the different specs of the different classes, because you have your, you know, sniper, heavy, mm -hmm. scout, medic, whatever. You have all those, and then you have their strengths and weaknesses, and then there's been DLC that's come out for it that apparently mm -hmm. is really, really good, like some side mission -y type stuff. But, you know, it's just it's one of those games that you can't stop playing. When you pick it up, you, you're like, all right, you take an hour to learn it, because mm -hmm. it takes a little while. It's, it's kind of a deep game. There's a lot of mechanics. You have to learn how the cover works, how, you know, what, what the difference between half and full cover is if you're going to take damage. You have mm -hmm. to, you know... Yeah, you can blow up walls and stuff, and then once you tear out that wall, you can take out a guy with no cover, things like that. But once you get those mechanics down, it feels good. It's a great game. If you pay, play it on the PC, though, I would recommend playing it with a controller, mm. just because playing it with a controller just feels more natural. It feels more natural, and it feels after like, After, like, ten years of Dave going, I hate playing on a console. The controller sucks. I think I smell my own brains burning. <laughs> The argument with the controller and a console and, and me not liking it, I don't like playing mm -hmm. shooters with a controller. A first-person mm -hmm. shooter with a controller. Mm -hmm. However, adventure games, mm -hmm. you want to, like, third-person adventure games, platformers, things like that, and, and strategy games, you... Not, <laughs> not real-time strategy yeah, games, okay, anyway. obviously. You want to play with a controller. Um, but that, I mean, you could probably play it with a, a keyboard and mouse. I played it for a little while with a keyboard and mouse. It just... It didn't feel as snappy, snappy and comfortable as mm -hmm. I, as it did playing with a controller. Okay, good. So I'm glad you did a strategy game because I, I was kind of torn about what my second recommendation was okay. going to be, whether it would be a god game like Populous or SimCity, which I really love both of those. SimCity 3000, though, not the new SimCity. Yeah, um, the, the last one that wasn't this new one. So it's, I'm glad that you recommended the a strategy game, so I don't have to. So what I'm going to recommend, because as I was thinking back on like Fantasy Tactics, no, as what I I play, uh, as what I played a lot of as a kid during the summer is I either played an RPG or I would get those big collections for the PC. Remember they used to do those? Yeah, yeah, they, the, where you get like 10 discs for like five bucks. Yes. And they were, most of them were just, here's a coaster, here's a coaster. It, here's it, was, a basically coaster. Like, it was basically like, here's all the Dooms and three other games that you're not going to play. Here's yeah. all the Star Sieges and three other games you're yeah. not going to play. Or the, like the LucasArts collection that yeah. came with Full Throttle and Dig and then something, That's how I something, Dig. something. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, my, my favorite one was I had one from SSI that mm -hmm. had all of their non uh, Dungeons and Dragons games. Okay. So it was like War, win, uh, War Winds, War Winds Human Onslaught, mm -hmm. uh, Fantasy General, uh, Panzer General, all these stuff. And that's how I played through all those games. Okay. So here's my suggestion. I had this wonderful thought. We have new collections. I highly recommend you pick up any of the HD collections. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, the Jack with, and Daxter. Yes, with extra recommendation going to the Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, and Ratchet and Clank. Because those games have a bunch of collectibles in them. They're really deep games in and of mm -hmm. themselves. And you're getting a really good deal. Like, I just bought the Ratchet & Clank collection off a, a sale for $15. Yeah. So well, that's a Ratchet game for $5 each. Yeah. And, and, and like, I'm playing through them good. now. They look good. They do enough. It, there's a lot of times, especially when you're playing the first game in a series, mm -hmm. like when I was playing the first Sly Cooper, the first Jack, and now the first Ratchet, yeah. you can see where they... The, the game mechanics that we're used to now mm -hmm. hadn't really gestated in those first yeah, titles. Yeah, you see the iteration between the first game, the second game, third game, yeah. and all the way up to whatever the latest one was. Yeah, so you like see, the first you Ratchet game... You see the refinement, the, the, the creation mm -hmm. and refinement of these mechanics, yeah. and that's always really nice to see in a series, and you, you, know, you, but you figure out kind of how game development works. Part and parcel with that is that when you're playing those first games, a lot of stuff that you're used to is not there. Like yeah. the right stick in Ratchet and Clank, the right stick now, like that's what you use to aim. It works like mm -hmm. a third, every other third person game, and you move your reticle by yeah. it, but you, there's not really a reticle in Ratchet and Clank, but that's how you move your gun. Whatever's in the middle of the screen is what you're aiming at, yeah. more or less. Not so in this one. Yeah. So I had to kind of readjust and everything, but once again, it's $15. So we'll think about, like I said, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter. Um, there's a Metal Gear Solid one. Th there's a Metal Gear Solid one that I recommend, uh, Sly Cooper I recommend. Uh, for those of you who are like curling up their toes at this, there's also a Mass Effect trilogy one for forty dollars on Amazon. Yeah, there is. I highly recommend that because that is peanut butter of RPG and chocolate of these collections. You're getting a ton of content for a low price. Oh yeah. Uh, the uh, ones I don't recommend is I don't recommend Hitman. I don't recommend Devil May Cry, and I don't recommend God of War because uh, I think all of those collections, those games are not long to begin with, and just shuffling them all in together and saying. 
Here's two God of Wars. Well, the, the God of War saga is not. You're not bad. getting as much content. Well, like the saga one has. The saga all, has three and and the two one, PS. two, three, and the two PSP games. Yeah, so that's not horrible. I would go for that one, yeah. but I think that one's still sixty dollars. The Infamous is a, Infamous is another good example. The HD collection for Infamous, where it's just well, Infamous the, one, Infamous two, and the add-on, not really worth the forty dollars. Those games are already HD though. Yes. So, but, uh, but Kill you can Zone get a new PS3 controller yeah. and and get it for less than the price. That's what I sure. did. Killzone Collection, uh, also I don't recommend just because Killzone 2 and Killzone 3 are already out there. They're great games. Killzone HD, is going back and playing the first Killzone now isn't really Kinda worth it. Meh. It was revolutionary back when I first played it, but now it's not so much. Now it's just there. Um, so yeah, so definitely go grab those collections. And once again, you're getting tons and tons of content for a very little price. Yeah, we are. Lots of, I mean, that is a ton of games. I've been real tempted to buy the Metal Gear Solid, like the two game collection on my Vita for like 20 bucks. Yeah. I well, Peace Walker. I, I've already played Peace Walker. Not so um, much. You know, Peace Walker's great. Okay. That's the problem. It's amazing. For 20 bucks by itself, and then I get Metal Gear yeah. Solid 2, I um, think, is what comes with it. Because when, when I first bought my PSP, I went out and bought Acid and Portable Ops, and then Portable Ops Plus, and then Acid mm -hmm. 2. As, the Acid games you don't really need. Portable Ops is interesting. But when Peace Walker came out and I played Peace Walker, it clicked. I was like, oh, this is what Portable Ops was supposed to be. Gotcha. So if you're going to pick up a collection for that, I highly recommend you pick up the console one, which has Peace Walker HD in it. Okay. Uh, don't pick up the Silent Hill collection. It's pretty broken. Silent Hill has always been kind of broken. Though. No, I mean, like, it legitimately, it's pretty does, broken. Does not function properly? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, it's not the way you should play those games. Okay. So, yeah, so pick up the collections. Pick up something... Tell us in the comments what you're playing this summer, what you're looking forward to, what you've maybe your memories of summer. We also love to hear from you in a video response. Don't forget to spay new to your Pokemon, and we'll see you next week with our Xbox speculation show.